And welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Totera. Once again, we welcome you all over the world, and we thank you so much for taking time out of your busy lives to join us here on Red Card. And what a special night it is. We've got a special guy on the line, a local guy, a proud Ontario kid, a proud Canadian. But right now, today, a proud San Jose Earthquake player, Nana Atacora. Welcome to Red Card, my friend. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you on, Nana. Talk about going back where you had some good times in San Jose and how this all came about again. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be back. Uh, it was a long, long process um, that, that, that got me back here. Uh, it was, you know, I, I kept in co- contact with the coaching staff and, and the management team uh, over the past year and a half. So uh, it was something that I thought was right for me uh, this year. And and like I said, I kept in contact with them and then decided it was right for me to come back. Did you really think, Nana, in all honesty, you would end up back in San Jose the way things finished up? Uh, well, yeah, see, the thing is, what people don't know was it, it was never, it didn't finish up on, our, on wrong terms with me in San Jose. It was just I was dealing with a lot of personal things that I just wanted to be closer to home. Uh, and, that, and that's why I, at that time I asked, for them to trade my rights uh, somewhere closer to home. But, uh, you know, last year I had left the country. I thought it was best for me to just get away from everything, um, from friends, family, and, and just focus on myself. And I did that last year and uh, spoke with Frank when I got back, and, and it was right for me to come back to San Jose. Now, now, let's talk about how important it is for a young man like you to really be focused in the game that you love so much, to play it with full intensity and with a full, clear mind. Because in today's game, a lot of guys are coming and gunning for you, especially where your position is. Yeah, it, it's very important. And, and, and I figured that out um, over the last 18 months. Uh, you know, 2011 was a tough year for me, uh, not just on the field, uh, mostly off the field. You know, in your life, you're going to deal with a bunch of circumstances. And I, and I lost two people close to me in 2011. And that just took, you know, I don't want to say the love of the game, but it just took my mind away from the game for a bit. And and I felt, you know, 2012 was best for me to just get away and, and, and refocus and, and just get that love of the game back. And I did that, and I'm, I'm so happy to be back here. You know, I'm fit, and I'm enjoying my football again. You know, Nana, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think a lot of times people forget that Athletes, pro athletes like yourselves are regular human beings like myself and many others out there. We deal with day-to-day issues on a daily basis and we don't know what that athlete is going through because they might make that money and they might have that bling bling, but they could be having other issues that are really affecting them. What what would you like to say, Nana, to a young player that might be struggling away from the pitch as well uh, to really understand how vital and important family is to help get you through things? Yeah, I would say, you know what, one thing I learned that family is everything, you know, and if if you're not right, people don't know, you know, they just see an athlete and they just think, you know, they need, they don't have emotions, you know, that, you know, everyone loves them, and it's not like that at all, you know, you're going to deal with a lot of ups and downs off the field, and if you don't know how to deal with it and, and find yourself, you're going to struggle, and, and, you know, you just need to learn how to, you know, stay close to your family and just know how to deal with those tough times. Nana, let's talk about Coach Frank Gallup. I've had him on my show a few times. I think he's a classy guy. I think he's a down-to-earth, straight shooter, a great individual. I think this is the type of guy you can flourish under. Talk about Coach Gallup and yourself going forward. Yeah, I, I love Coach uh, Frank Gallup. You know, and it's not just Frank. It's, it's Mark Watson, Ian, and John Doe here. It's, it's a real family-oriented team here. And, and that's the main reason I decided it was right for me to come back because, you know, Frank knows. The, the, the situation that I was in before and he he respected it so well and, and I'm so grateful that that I met him you know he, he let me go away and, and get myself together and he, he he'd always told me you know if we have a chance to have you back we're, we're, we're gonna take it and and I'm so grateful to be back because under him I, I think I could uh, develop him to be a, a great player. Nana, let's talk about the conference you're in. Obviously, the defending champs, the LA Galaxy, they're going to be minus a couple of heavy hitters right off the top of the season. Uh, Beckham gone, and Landon Donovan won't be ar- uh, arriving till a little bit later on, and they've also got some injuries. You guys have got, I think, one of the best players anywhere, I would say, in the world, not just North America, in Chris Wondolowski. Talk about him and talk about your team getting ready for a real, real grind this season. 
Yeah, in fact, you know, it's not just the West that's strong this year, too. You know, the East has made some, you know, a, a bunch of great signings. But like you said, the, the West is a, is a tough conference. We know that. Uh, we're dealing with, a, we have a, a lot of injuries right now, but, you know, we have we have a big group, a large group, and a lot of depth. So, uh, like you said, Wando, you know, Wando spit, and he, he's scoring goals. You saw it this preseason. So, we're, we're going to do well. You know, we have big Victor Bernardes, uh, Alan Gordon, who's just coming back off injury. So, uh, we're confident, and we know we're going to have a good season. This year. I'm glad that you mentioned Victor Bernardes and he plays for his national team and he's an outstanding player. I love the way this guy plays, Nana. And I want to talk to you about the way you played. The last game that I watched Canada play the USA in Houston, I really thought I saw a different Nana. A guy that was focused, was really uh, working on the simple part of his game. And you really flourished, Nana. And I saw the whole team, for the first time in a long time, a Canadian team say, hey, we're here. We're here to compete with you. You're going to have to give us your best. Talk about that and talk about Canada needing to get where the USA and other countries in CONCACAF are at. Yeah, I just think, and that's one thing I said about the last camp we had. We had a young group, but there was they put us up against, you know, a very talented U.S. team and a very talented Denmark team. And, I you know, yes, we lost, you know, a up into Denmark, but those are the games we need to play in, you know, just to... So we're in that environment. No matter what the result is, we're only going to improve the more games we get. And uh, I think you guys saw it against the U.S. Um, in the U.S., tough game, but we came up with a result. So I think the more games you put as young players in, uh, yes, we're going to have a lot of ups and downs, but it's the only way you're going to improve when, you, when you're put in those situations. So I think the program is going in the, the right direction. Um, we have a lot of good young players, and Daniel Henry, Ashton Morgan, a few guys on the team. So uh, that program is going in the right direction in my eyes. You know, Nana, you mentioned Daniil Henry, and up until he got hurt yesterday in that big game where Canada lost 4-2 to the U.S., I thought he was playing one of his best games in a very, very long time. He showed leadership. He showed a lot of qualities, and this is what is so key to Canada moving forward. But again, the key question is this, Nana. A lot of people like myself are, are really a diehard Canadian soccer fans that really have not seen a lot of good uh, good qualities from the Canadian players in the last number of years. And we look at the USA down south and we see how they have grown in leaps and bounds. In your mind, Nana, you've traveled the world, you've played in Canada and the US, and you see our young players, you've seen USA young players. What is it that is missing in the Canadian uh, youth system that needs to get where the US is at? Uh, if you were asking that question a few years ago, I might have an answer to you. But now I don't think there's anything missing. I think Canada has uh, has everything. You see Toronto FC with the academy, Vancouver with the academy. They're, we're developing players now. I just think maybe, you know, in a few more years, you're, you're going to start to see, you know, more evidence of, of the players we're, we're starting to develop. But but I think yeah, I think Canada has, has, you know, it's doing a lot better in terms of academy and development players. I think in some places like Toronto, they're doing better in a, a better job than than most places in the U.S. So uh, I just think in time, in time, people will start to see it. You but can see it already in Toronto with some of their young players. So uh, I think it's going in the right direction. Then Nana, could it come down to coaching and quality coaching? And I mean that with all due respect. There is some good coaches in this country, but I think a lot of times we lack in the professionalism and in the intelligence of coaches that are coming from a Spain and Italy. You had the fortune to work with a great coach in Canada, Patrick Tobo, but many haven't. Is it come down to good coaching? Uh, I see. I can't say that because every coach that, that has coached me has, has been a great coach. Uh, yes, we could use more uh, coaches like Patrick Tobo. I'm happy you said that because he was one of the best coaches I had. Um, but you know, every coach that has coached me has been great. I think we could just use a m more more good coaches at at younger levels, um, and 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 then that would help uh, our youth as well. We'll close it out with this, Nana. We really appreciate your time, but I want you to give a tip out there to the youngsters that want to live a dream that Nana Atacora is living, playing and making a living and smiling, as I've always seen you do when you play the game. You always smile and you play with intensity. What do you want to tell those youngsters, Nana, that are on that bench that might not be getting that playing time, that don't have that confidence because the coach doesn't believe in them? What do you want to say to them? I would just say believe in yourself and keep working hard. Uh, you're going to face a lot of adversity in this game. You know, soccer is one of the loneliest sports in the world, but as long as you believe in yourself and you work hard and you keep fighting no matter what you're going through, uh, things will turn around uh, as long as you just keep believing that.
Well said. And God bless Nana at the core of the San Jose Earthquakes. We wish you nothing but success with the Earthquakes, but also with Team Canada coming up hopefully in the Gold Cup. Much success, my friend. And again, thank you so much for taking time and joining us here on Red Card. Thank you for having me again. That is uh, Nana Atacora of the San Jose Earthquakes. He has just signed with them. He is one of my favorites, a guy I've got a lot of time for. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going out to Los Angeles and talk to Scott French of the LA Times and talk to him about the LA Galaxy. Can they three-peat? Stay tuned right here on Red Card. <laughs> 